During the three years which I spent at Cambridge, my time was wasted as far as the academical studies were concerned. I attempted mathematics, but I got on very slowly. The work was repugnant to me, chiefly from my not being able to see any meaning in the early steps in algebra. This impatience was very foolish, and in after years, I have deeply regretted that I did not proceed far enough at least to understand something of the great leading principles of mathematics. For men thus endowed seem to have an extra sense. Population genetics has been an absolutely fundamental mathematical part of biology for a hundred years. Other areas of biology, my own, where I've spent most of my own life, ecology, is a very young subject. And for a long time, ecology uh, was very rooted in kind of a natural history view of the world. So going out and really describing in detail all the wonderful, wonderful details of, of natural systems and ecosystems and studying the plants and animals in great detail. And so it had a very descriptive quality. And what mathematics has enabled is uh, to kind of take a couple of steps back and to start to abstract and to look for patterns across systems uh, and to make broader generalities about what we think that we're seeing in nature and what it's trying to tell us. A, a much more sophisticated understanding of that would, un, uh, would articulate how species very specifically depend on one another to stay alive. And that is a fascinating problem for me to understand the balance of nature and how things depend on one another is hugely motivating. We really still do not understand some of the patterns we see in food webs. And by food webs, I mean you take the various species of plants that are getting energy from the sun to be the basis of all life, and then think various species eating the plants and species eating the things that eat the plants. And we can construct a web by drawing, as it were, lines in a diagram from the various species that eat the plants to the plants they eat. Some will eat only one plant, some will eat lots of plants. And then we can draw lines from the predators that eat the herbivores and some of the omnivores like us that eat the plants and the animals. And you get a web of interconnections. And now you can ask questions about the dynamics of that topological web structure. Ecosystems are a paradigmatic complex system. There's lots of species, there's lots of individuals, there's many different kinds of interactions between those species and individuals and populations, and there's the uh, abiotic environment, there's the climate and the soil and the history of the site. And so this is obviously a complex system. In my um, Little Rock Lake food web, there's tens of millions of different food chains within it. It's only got a hundred species, it's got about a thousand links amongst those hundred species, but there are millions of food chains there. And the computer can just travel down, every, look through every single food chain and characterize its length, who it goes through. This is a food web that has 20 species and these are also what we use to run uh, to run dynamics on. And so each of these links and each of these species are linked together by uh, differential equations. These equations keep tra track of the biological energy that's existing within a species and that goes between species when they eat each other. And so what's happening is, of course, the, the balls are the species and then these links are the feeding links between the species. And if you look at any particular species at this sphere, as it grows, that shows that the biomass for that species is actually getting larger. And uh, the links also show the increases and decreases of energy flow between species. 
And if you actually follow, you know, say if you look at this species, which is an herbivore, and it feeds on these two uh, plants, primary producers, as they tend to get bigger, it'll start feeding more off of them and it will also, it'll increase in biomass and driving their biomass down. And what's also happening uh, is that eventually there's some extinctions that will go on just naturally as a result of the dynamics. And uh, I think one species already went extinct while I was talking. And what we find is that um, often ecosystems are quite robust. Uh, uh, it removing a species, at least within our models, doesn't immediately mean the loss of other species. But we find specific species, people have called them keystones in nature, keystone species in nature, that if you take those things out, you lose lots of other species. It upsets the balance of nature, and uh, many species go extinct because a particular species has been taken out of it. And this is something actually that modeling has shown us, or has shown me, is that you, it's very hard to know ahead of time when you lose a particular species, even if it's a teeny tiny little fly that you think, oh, it would be great to get rid of this fly, or <laughs> who knows what would, you know, we don't think anything would happen if we got rid of it. But it could be through the web of interactions of these feeding relationships that it could actually end up having significant impacts on things that are very important to humans. And it, it can be tricky and also because sometimes the message you're hearing clearly from the science doesn't fit easily with intuition. People are skeptical of equations. They're skeptical of computer models. They're not sure it represents what's going on in nature. A big research agenda item for our group here is to demonstrate how closely the equations mimic nature.